Hey everybody, right here, and welcome back to some more Lauren the Amazon Princess. We are going to do even more personal quests because because we finished Mirf's quest, Ray's opened up. I'm trying to think of which one I want to do next. I kind of want to do Apollo Me shows, so let's do that. Oh yeah, he is pissed off at us because we kind of had to blackmail him into taking us along. <laughs> you old fart. A Polymisho was quiet when Saren approached him at dawn. He scowled once before leading him from camp and into the wilderness. And then he killed me, and I was never to be seen again. Now, no, that would be kind of cruel. Their journey was more of the same. Long stretches of walking with absolutely no words in between. They traveled into Mount Kronos. Saren was not looking forward to the climb or the cold. After some time, Saren dared to speak up as they approached the side of the cliff. Where are we going? Never you mind. You're here to assist me, not to ask questions. I've been quiet so far. The least you owe me is some explanations. No, I do not. Please, I've come this far. A Polymusho grumbled. We are almost there. We will search the Tomb of Fallen. Saren had heard of it. It was a massive tomb full of war heroes. They were buried with nothing but the clothes on their backs. What do you plan to find there? A Polymusho said nothing and continued to hike. You're not looking for something, but someone. A Polymusho stopped and turned around. He gave Saren a long look. We must be hastier. Before the old wizard could press on, however, their way was blocked by unfriendly company. Oh, goody. Thankfully, we have a badass wizard with us. So this should not be a problem. Let's do a magic blast. I hope it doesn't come to this again. See, easy as pie. And we got bracers. Let's see if the bracers are any good. Magic defense speed. Give me a reason. Oh my god, she still has leather bracer bracers? I need to fix that. And these are only beneficial to a mage, really, so... Let's do that. And save. The orcs were slain. A polymisho was warned from the climb and the battle. Are you well? I am. No more dallying. Onwards. The old man did not stop to recover, even though Saren knew he needed to. They passed many obscure caves and burial sites in search of the mass tomb. At last they made it. When they reached the door, Apollo braced himself to catch his breath. Have some of my water. Apollo dismissed him. Saren was offended until he realized that his water canteen was frozen solid. Ah, nice. I wonder if you threw it into a wall, if it would just, like, shatter, there'd be just nothing left. There must have been something that Saren could do to help a Polymusho. The tomb was larger than Saren ever imagined. Small, utilitarian coffins lined the walls. I hope I said that right. There must be thousands of bodies here. Tens of thousands. Burials were rare in Erevorn, but the monks of the mountain had made an effort to preserve the bodies of fallen soldiers to honor them. It was almost in vain, as the way to visit the dead was too plagued by the very reason they were often burned. Beware! I have them. Okay, I want to take care of this guy, the necromancer, first. What's the best spell to do that? There. And the best spell for you would be that. 
now switch to just magic bolts. Does anyone need healing? Because really, really, when it gets to the point where it's obvious you can win, don't waste your SP. The battle wore a Polygmu show down even further, and he was forced to take a moment to recover. Saren watched him closely. Why are you pushing yourself so much? The dead here have not left. At my age, everything is a race against time. The Polymu show started, slowly started to search the names on each coffin. Sorry. Your assistance is now required. I'm looking for the name of Gwen Dillon. Gwen Dillon? The Polymu show turned away. Saren was determined to finally be of use to Apolly Misho and began his own search in a separate part of the tomb. Hours upon hours passed, names began to blur together. Oh! What a list. Nope. Nope, it's GW. There it is. Saren almost passed up Gwen Dillon's name when he finally found it, and Vinny could not believe it. Sir? Sir! Apollo Misho had long disappeared, but he had long disappeared, but he rushed into sight at Saren's call. He hobbled forward, leaning heavily on his staff. Please tell me you have Saren pointed at the tomb. Apollo Misho grasped its end with disbelief. A smile formed on his face, a rare smile sight for Saren. Who is she? A Polly Misho promptly pulled the coffin out with Saren's help and opened it. After the dust cleared, a sleeping skeleton was before them, hands crossed and dressed in tattered clothing. It is my daughter. Oh, he's trying to revive his daughter! How much do you want to bet that this isn't going to work and she's going to attack us? You know, every RPG ever? <laughs> The wizard reached into his robes and procured a bottled potion. He opened it with a squeak. Saren recognized the turquoise color and immediately grabbed hand before he could act. Wait, are you sure this is wise? Unhand me. She's dead. You know what can happen. We had to fight our way through the undead just to get here. Is that what you want her to be? Do not instruct me on my own life's work. You've done your job. You may leave the mountain. Sir, I won't allow you to do this. They both stood and glared at each other. Saren reached for the potion, but Apollo pulled it away. Young man! In their struggle, the potion tipped into the casket. Oh, God damn it, Saren. They froze as the liquid sprinkled across the skeleton. Oops. I have the magical power to unwind time! The bones started to rattle. The clothes on his body started to mend. As a Polymisha wanted, the body was animating, but no flesh covered its bones. The skeleton sat up and picked itself out of the coffin. That is a strangely masculine shape. Gwen? The skeleton stood stoic for a moment and then faced the Polymisha. Stars. My daughter. Apolly Misho smiled and opened his arms. The skeleton moved towards him, but not to return his embrace. Oh shit. Yep, sorry, Apollo Misho. You're gonna have to fight. Does anyone need healing? Whew. Oh, Jesus. Gwen was destroyed, but so became a Polymisho. He kneeled by the remains of his daughter and wept. Why? Why did you give your life when I was so willing? You had so much potential. Saren gave a Polymisho the time he needed to truly make peace with his daughter's death. He had spent so much time in the idea that she could come back that it was clear he had never allowed himself closure. Saren started to restore Gwendolyn to her coffin. A Polymisha was still on the floor, refusing to let go of Gwen's embroidered cloak. 
Her mother gave this to her. It was the day she was admitted into the Magic Academy. She insisted on fighting alongside me in the war. Her mother forbid it, but I took her anyway. The day I came home without her. He squeezed a fabric. How did she die? The Polymucho slowly stood with much effort. Saren finished replacing the tomb. She sacrificed herself in my place. Sacrifice? Our foe was too strong. She knew what had to be done and she did it before I could stop her. I'm sorry. She sounds like a very remarkable woman. Silence filled the tomb once again. The Polymucho turned away. We need to return. The Polymucho swallowed his sorrow and took belabored steps to make his way out of the tomb. When they reached the entrance and they felt the sting of the frigid air again, the Polymucho visibly weakened. He leaned heavily on his staff and shook. Saren crouched in front of a Polymucho. Allow me to carry you. Nonsense. You don't need to pretend with me, Archwizard. Let me take but one of your burdens. A Polymucho muttered and sighed. He eventually caved in and allowed Saren to carry him on his back. The trek back to camp felt twice as long. When they were back, they both needed a long rest. Before a Polymucho retired, however, he caught Saren's ear. You were a decent help upon the mountain. Saren smirked to himself. <laughs> Damn right I was. I'm interested in knowing what it would take to garner higher praise if a leg's journey on my back is only decent. After his breakdown in the tomb, Saren thought he would never see a Polymucho smile again, but Venny proved him wrong just then. Good night. He disappeared back into his tent. In time, Saren would learn that a Polymucho's alchemy had stopped and his findings scrapped. After seeing what his work had ultimately led to, he decided that it was a dangerous slope and it needed to end with him. A Polymucho treasured the cloak that he had recovered from his daughter as a way of coming to terms with what had happened after so long. You've received the Cloak of the Fallen. Damn. That was like the most emotionally draining fight to date. Gwen's Mantle, Boost Magic, Defense, SP Region, and Threshold. Alright, now let's see if anybody else can use what I have now. Him, yeah, but it's for Magic users. You already have it. Shambara could use it. Mirth? Nah. Alright, Shambara, here you go. Improved her her equipment, at least by a little bit. Do you think a Polymucho would be will be nicer to us now? <laughs> I doubt it. Oops. Alright, we have three more quests to do. Lauren's Rays and Amakikis. Yeah, let me adjust here. Ah, adjust, adjust. Please note that the quests have very tough battles. They're not that tough. Let's do Amakikis next. There we go. Saren prepared to search for Amakiki's clan with him. Lauren gave her two bodyguards permission to leave, knowing both would see what they both knowing both would see that they each returned. Amakiki was usually only burdened with his weapon and armor, but now he was carrying a heavy looking bag on his back. What is that? Food. The nomads have fled north out of fear and have left their herds behind. Amakiki was worried for his clan, even though they had shunned him. Saren thought about what Amakiki meant to do once he found his clan as they left camp. <clears throat> I 
They knew that they would be spending several nights to sleep in the fields. The plains were expansive, but you could see far. No nomads were in sight. That night, they made a fire. <clears throat> Amu opened the sack of food and shared it. They had mostly been silent the whole time, but Saren had questions. Why have you told no one of your exile? It is not necessary to know. How is it necessary that I know? Amakiki paused. You question my loyalty and pride. You needed to see that I am deep in both. You are very prideful indeed. His brow furrowed. Behind him, Saren spotted movement. Shadowy figures were creeping up on them. Watch out! Shit, Saren sprung to his feet and tossed Amakiki his weapon. The gladiator grabbed it and spun around to meet their attackers. The orcs screeched from having been discovered, but charged them anyway. Unfortunately, they did not know what kind of battle was in store for them. Because goddammit, two burly men? You have no chance. Okay, shield bash, battle cry, cause and fear, shield defense, taunt. I've never really used Amakiki that much, so I kind of had to just, like, familiarize myself. However, all I have to do is just click. Oh, shit. There we go. Barely even broke a sweat. The orcs were slain. It was only a small group, likely on patrol. They were also dumbasses because they charged a gladiator and a paladin. Well, I call him a paladin. No more fires or more will come for us. Amakiki bent down and inspected the ragged clothing on the orc corpses. He touched their weapons and accessories with horror. What's wrong? These were made by nomad hands. Amakiki stood up and looked at Saren with unmasked fear. They're preying on the clans. Saren steeled himself. There would be no rest tonight. Let's go. They took off from their campsite and spent the night and the morning traversing the plains as efficiently as they could. At last, they saw a horde of orcs and heard faint screams. They ran for the orcs even though they were still so far away. The orcs were more than happy to wait. Ah, oh, god damn it. I hate having the paralyzed element on me. On the bright side, these guys are pretty pathetic. Stand aside. Does anyone need healing? I mean, my god. When the orcs were cleared, they saw all that remained. People of a barbaric culture were strewn across the field. This nomad clan did not survive. Oops. Amakiki was speechless. They desperately searched each person but found not a single survivor. The gladiator could not contain his despair any longer and fell to his knees. Saren's throat went dry as he watched Amakiki tightly shut his eyes and shake. Saren could only stand quietly for the moment of peace that these people deserved. The silence was filled by the sound of an army coming over the hill. But it was not an army, it was another group of nomads. They were shocked to see the bloody field and then enraged. Amakiki rose to greet them, but the nomads assumed that they were responsible for the slaughter. The nomads attacked for vengeance. Ah shit. Damn, that, that is a muscle body, my god. You could break my head open like a fucking coconut. Ah! We almost got this guy, come on! Alright, now use your shield bash! Why are you focusing Saren? My god, what did he do to you? Ooh. Oh, our health restored. That must have been the final fight. The 
Loud and repetitive grunting slowed the attacks of the nomads, and they started pulling back as even more nomads came over the hill. The grunts were coming from the largest man in the group. He stopped, and the warriors returned to the top of the hill. They stared at Amakiki and Saren for a very long time. Amakiki finally understood. You must leave. He led Saren in the opposite direction of the clan and traveled to a safe distance. They allowed the clan to deal with their people. They recovered the dead bodies and prepared them for a traditional nomad burial. Saren and Amakiki watched for many hours as the clan gathered stone to cover the, cover the bodies. Even though Saren had seen enough, Amakiki was not moved. He stood on the hill and watched the nomads ever intently. In the valley, he could see that there were, they were being watched as well. Some warriors kept a close eye on them, but so did a few children and an older woman. While Amakiki watched, Saren retrieved the sack of food that Amakiki had dropped a short while back. Do we give him this now? He took in a long breath. Yes, all of it. But I cannot go. Saren could hear the frailty in the gladiator's voice. I will. Saren slipped the food onto his back and walked slowly down the hill towards the nomads. Those of them that were watching grew defensive and some children ran away. About halfway there, the older woman that was watching started to grunt in panic, stepping backwards. The largest man in the clan was quick to find his way in front of her. I come in peace. They did not attack. Saren was afraid to move again. Instead, Saren retrieved the sack of food and opened it. The Ser small group of nomads slowly advanced to see what he had brought. By now, the entire clan had stopped to stare at him. Inside of the sack was fruit and dried meat. The nomads' eyes lit up at seeing food as if they had not seen any for a long time. Saren noticed that the older woman and her mate were still glancing at Amakiki down upon the hill. A small boy clinging to the woman's leg, however, was still looking right at Saren. Saren looked over his shoulder to see Emakiki waiting upon the hill, but his forlorn look was clear even from this distance. Saren looked back at the nomads. He misses you very much. Their eyes grew sad. The warriors took the sack of food and the entire clan gathered around it. The largest nomad still stood silently next to the woman. Saren felt that his time was up and they had done what they had come for, so he turned to leave. You. Saren was surprised to hear the large man speak. Give. He pulled off a mighty shield from his back. He looked at it once before thrusting it at Saren. Give to who? I'm a Kiki. Saren smiled and took the shield with a nod. He traveled back up the hill and presented the shield to Amakiki. Why do you have this? They miss you too. He took the great man's shield with awe. It was battle-worn and primitively made, but hier hieroglyphics adorned it to show that it meant much more than just a shield. Amakiki finally took his last glance at the nomads as he put the shield on his back. The large man and the woman turned away to share in the food. Amakiki started walking away with much effort. Saren walked beside him. And you have a brother. The gladiator s slowed to a stop. Then he looked over at Saren. His eyes were full of longing, but at the same time, with content. Likely just as prideful. I hope so. It is time to return. I have your back. Saren had not appreciated how far Emakiki had come from his roots. Though he rarely spoke, he spoke fluently. And after meeting the nomads, it was clear why Emakiki would be offended to learn that his people were called barbarians. They did not live like the rest of the world, but they were as rich a culture as any other. On their trip back to Lauren, Emakiki told Saren the whole tale of his life after exile. He was seen as an inferior brute and woke, worked demeaning labor for no pay. But the times when Amakiki spoke of the gladiator arena showed how much he valued that part of his life. It was likely the only way he garnered respect for the Empire, so that would explain why he worked so hard to maintain it. Saren felt he truly come to know Amakiki and why he was steeped in pride. 
Because without it, Amakiki wasn't his parents' son. I like Amakiki as a character, like, a lot more now. Damn, that was intense. Alright, let's give you the shield. Some nice benefits, too. Defense, Threshold, and HP Regen. You double wield, you double wield. I love how, like, nobody has a use for shields except for Amakiki. And now he has the best one, basically. Alright, with selfies. Alright, good. Good. We're in very good shape. And and back to going being silent he goes. Alright, looks like we've talked to everybody, so next we will do Ray's quest and then Lauren's quest, so I'm assuming afterwards we're pretty much done with character quests, I think. I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to keep talking to people as much as I can. We do need to get that fifth and final heart for Mesfit, so yeah guys, I hope you have enjoyed. Um... Lots of sad things happen here. Sorrow and pride. But overall, we've learned a lot more about our characters, which is awesome. Character development up the ass. I can't wait for the next part where I get to learn even more. So I'm Rai. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you did, I encourage you to leave a like and comment as it helps and benefits the growth of the channel and tells me you guys are enjoying this playthrough. Happy gaming, everybody. I'll see you soon.